Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we are interviewing the fabulous Janella Purcell. Love your name, Janella. Thank you. <laughs> and Janella Purcell is a pioneer of the natural health and wellness industry and has worked tirelessly over the years to bring her extensive knowledge to the mainstream. Her role as a respected and awarded naturopath herbalist and nutritionist with almost 25 years of clinical experience has shaped the way Australians view their connection between food and healing. She has led the way in the media for many others to follow in the areas of food as medicine, body mind healing and sustainable chemical free living. Janella is a best known both in Australia and internationally for her role as a passionate and devoted whole food chef, bringing her skills and extensive knowledge of natural health to the small screen via TV programs such as Good Chef, Bad Chef, which I love watching you in, and The Biggest Loser and What's Good For You, as well as holding regular spots on morning TV for many years. She has a wide and loyal following on social media and is a sought after public speaker, retreat facilitator, and healer. She is an award-winning author of five best-selling books on natural healing and her ethical and flavorsome recipes are widely loved and used. Janella's books have become recommended reading in natural health colleges and she has been a regular com columnist for many of Australia's most popular and wide-reaching publications and websites. Janelle is a retreat facilitator hosting individual tailored retreats on her beautiful property in the Byron Bay hinterland that are re re revered both for Janelle's, Janelle's, I'm saying Janelle, <laughs> Janelle's <laughs> innate healing skills and warmth and personalised menu. She also holds group retreats in Byron Bay, and I love Byron Bay, under the With Fest brand, Women in the Hinterland, and in 2024, we'll be taking small groups on spiritual, spiritually based nature walks throughout Asia. It's fantastic. In 2019, Janella was awarded a fellowship from the National Naturopaths and Herbalist Association of Australia for her service and contribution to the industry over the past two decades. Janella's favourite places to be are in her kitchen, same, or garden, <laughs> not same. <laughs> She unwinds by turning Wi-Fi off, long baths under the night sky. How amazing is that? Taking her dog to the beach and connecting like-minded people. Welcome, Janella. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. And as you know, I'm a, a massive fan and I loved watching you on Good Chef, Bad Chef. And Thank we you. had a bit of a chat around that about, because I'm a passionate cook as a lot of my um listeners know I love to cook uh and your recipes you introduced me to to ingredients that I'd never seen before and the scary I, fun ones yeah, yeah and I mentioned to you the other week that it was funny because I was in the supermarket and I saw Aga Aga and I'm like Janella <laughs> <laughs> like 30 years later, people are catching up to it. It's like, oh, that. She can use that instead of eggs. Oh. I know. It's, <laughs> and and I still, still, you know, I've got so much learning to do around healthy cooking. Um, but I want to I want to know, Janella, you're, so you've gone into the, you're a whole food chef, you're a naturopath, you're a herbalist. How did you get, and a nutritionist, how did you get into it? Was it something that you were, when you were young, you thought, oh, that's what I want to be? Or how did you get into it? I had terrible health, basically, growing up. But it wasn't recognised. It was one of those invisible things. And it was, you know, gut problem. So I always was bloated. I was putting on weight easily. My siblings weren't. We all had a, my mother's Lebanese. We had a really healthy Mediterranean diet, a really active lifestyle, a loving family. But Mrs. Miss Emotional over here who felt everything that was going on around her and everywhere else, I absorbed, this is what I've learned later, but I I just, I struggled. I had endometriosis. When puberty hit, oh, my God, it was that was the beginning of the end, really, because yeah. I had really severe stage four endometriosis when I was 13. So that was wow. difficult. So I couldn't eat a lot of things without having, 
you know, loose bowels and bloating and fatigue and, but the weight gain, I mean, as a teenage girl, I didn't care about any of that. It was the weight gain. So then I started fasting and started dieting and then that was terrible, right? Like, cause then you rebound and went to Weight Watchers and Gloria Marshall and I did all of that. And I was always interested in health anyway. It was a bent of mine, whether or not that was from, you know, all the issues I had with my health. So I started to cook a lot, but, you know, my grandmother and my mother and in my whole, my aunties, everybody, there was always food around. So I was really interested in what I could eat and what I couldn't eat, but it was limited, right? I mean, I grew up in Brisbane in the 60s, 70s, 80s, so it wasn't like I could go down the shop and even find coriander. So I did with the best I could and then... I worked in restaurants and vegan restaurants and I was really interested in the earth and nature and I worked in in co-ops, in whole food co-ops. And um, so then I got my chef's papers from time on the job, not from apprenticeship. It was working in hard slog. And then I studied, when I went around Asia for about a year actually from about 23 and that's where it really, I learned from small tribes about, you know, turmeric and galangal and different spices and that blew my head off. I was like, wow, I just, we didn't have the internet, right? So you couldn't just go, what are anti-inflammatory foods? So I learned that and came back and was hell-bent on opening up a bar, a a shop called Elixir, which was my first book it ended up being, but a cheese bar and a, you know, a herbal remedy store that you could add things to. And then I broke my leg rollerblading and I heard voice really loudly say you're a naturopath you're a healer study natural therapies it was incredible it was like this divine intervention when you're not listening you're too speedy we're going to stop you rollerblading so they did I did and then I studied natural therapies and uh, then it just went from there but actually after studying naturopathy and nutrition I'm thinking I mean that was brilliant for the herbal medicine part of it yes but it didn't really explain or help me with the body mind connection why are my emotions affecting my body so I studied Chinese medicine then and Ayurveda and kinesiology and it was like I'm the sponge of what else don't I know what else is missing why is this western world so focused on band-aiding symptoms and not looking at the causality of the issue because it's never just one thing and so I think people look at that and go oh god it's just too hard I'm gonna have another glass of wine and a Tim Tam and then we hate ourselves and then we have addictions and then we have this so I've made this is my life you know looking at unpacking and unraveling people's core issues or trauma and looking at why we're so sick yeah Yeah, and I think that you touched on, yeah, sometimes people just think it is too hard and um, I've I've discussed with you before that um, my hubby was diagnosed with prostate cancer um, just in June, like June, and it's He's all right though, right? He's doing okay. Yeah, yeah, so we're we're going the natural path Um, and the, the one thing I found quite interesting was how so many people would would have that would say stuff like oh but it, you know it's hereditary or there's nothing much mm-hmm. you can do about it like and mm-hmm. well, people that have gone down similar paths but have not done not changed their diet you know not done anything weird right weird <laughs> yeah and so i i have a really strong belief that the body can heal itself mm-hmm. and so you know we we've changed everything <laughs> just you know we've just you know from bloody um from diet to cold plunges to um rebounding on a trampoline you know we're doing all of this sort of stuff um and we're researching and really finding you know going down all these different rabbit holes it's fun and it's empowering it is after the mother guilt and the woman guilt goes what have i been doing for the last 50 years (laughs) a lot of people go through that but yeah. then you go, right, okay, let's strip all this crap back that we don't need and simplify yeah. our lives and clean it up and look how great we feel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I loved how, because when you were really a pioneer when you were on TV because I can't think of anybody else at that time who was really talking about, you know, uh, and you know, and I hate this word and I don't know how you feel about it, but when people call about alternative, mm. 
Considering we were around for millennia, like this way of healing and living was around for, you know, 70,000 years and it's only been the last 150 or so that allopathic, which is Western medicine, has been around. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. And, yeah, it's – and when you said I was a pioneer, there's no one really else on TV that is doing it because the food industry and big pharma, big pharma and big food is so powerful. I mean, that's why I left, really, because it was – educating people towards empowerment and that's not really what's wanted out there mostly so it was lucky I mean I've spoken to people in other countries and they have never especially America ever had someone on tv teaching healthy food and reducing chemicals in your life it's I just must have snuck through the cracks somehow yeah and so that's amazing. And so you, you were out there and you and and people then started to think, well, I know I did start to think, oh, I started to explore that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, and why I didn't, you know, lang- I think language is really powerful. And so when people call things like alternative medicine, um, to me it's like nature's medicine, what you're doing. It's nature. It is. And it's interesting. We were watching this, sh- we were watching a, an old um, an old episode of Seinfeld the other day, right? And I love Seinfeld. Yeah. And my son had it and he said, oh, look at this, mum. And we we had a laugh and it was this healer and it was like, you know, this comedy skit of this healer going, woo, you know, doing going, woo, all this oh, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, all woo-woo stuff. And even though it was funny, it still conditions people because if you think about anything that's on TV in regards to, nature's medicine it's all like that like it's it's made up to go i don't think that's an accident though i think yeah, exactly are framed as hippie woo woo witches and a little bit you know ignorant but that's any any renegades rebels people that change the future that initially they're going to be attacked because yeah. it's fear. There's fear in people and they're like, well, how dare you challenge the status quo? This yeah. is how we do it, even though it's shit and we're not happy and it's not really the way the world should be and people are suffering, but how dare you try and think of a better way? And then we're persecuted and punished for it. I mean, some of that, thank God that there was no social media when I was on TV because the letters that I got, I mean, I got death threats wow. from people. For just, you know, teaching about good food, I think people were so challenged. Well, they still are about doing the wrong thing and by their children. And the concept, I remember one morning I was on a morning show, a very big one, and the host before I went on went, I'd been, I was doing regular weekly segments, said, was just having a ciggy, and he said, do you reckon, really reckon food has anything to do with our health? I was like, <laughs> I went, nah. I just did, it was like, oh, my goodness, wow. I didn't realise how much people didn't know and how they didn't really want to know either. Yeah, Yeah. wow. So how did you, it's so interesting that you got onto TV in the first place. So how did that all come about? Because it's like they want you but then they don't want you, you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, no, totally. Totally. Brought up all of of you. Big your pardon? Maybe a controlled version of you they wanted. Oh, I, oh! I got offered roles on Getaway because I'm. They thought I was a good presenter, but I'm like, I'm on TV so I can be a star. I'm on TV to. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. Yeah. Oh, totally. There was so many fights before segments, you know, on t- on series that I did because they wanted me to, um, you know, promote this product or promote that product, which was genetically modified or you know, full of sucralose or saccharin or but constantly or fish that was far, farmed or was caught by wild um big the super trawlers and so all the other fish you know got caught up and died like dolphins and turtles and I'd be just like no like always and so there was it took a lot of strength but it you know it was very damaging for me it caught up with me at perimenopause and menopause all that stress when I had a collapse really a burnout because I was just fighting the good fight but I was the only one doing it I didn't have an agent I was I get with all these men all these white straight men that were just 
saying you'll have you have to do this you have to do that you have to do that so in the end you know they gave me an ultimatum and said if you don't use this like a couple of a week or two before the next the fifth series I think of good chef bad chef and said if you don't use this we're going to get someone else and I went well okay bye and that was that I mean you have to have integrity in what you do right and plus I said if I start using these products how and is anyone my followers and people who love this info going to believe me anymore if I'm like, oh, use this genetically modified soy milk that you're better off eating the cardboard container for than having yeah. to drink? Yeah. But it's just they're shooting themselves in the foot. It's all about profit, right? It's all about yeah. profit and who's in bed with who and who's who's sponsoring the show. Because the herbal, the natural health companies or the organic health companies, the small sustainable ones can't afford that kind of sponsorship. They can't afford it. So I was just using their products for nothing. And they were like, well, these companies over here who've got all the money want to use it and they want to get behind you. Yeah. Very stressful, JJ. <laughs> it was you very know, stressful. And that's what I love about you. You know, I really love that you stick to your values and that's a hard, you know, that can be a really hard journey to go down. And I know for me, particularly the last few years with what happened in the world, um, I really stuck with my values and I was running events everywhere. You know, I was running events all over Australia mm. and uh, I was very open with what my thoughts were around what was happening. Um, Good for you. And, uh, and I remember losing a 1,000 followers in one day on Facebook. Wow. One day <laughs> and I got banned from LinkedIn. Uh, and so, yeah. and, and it's never been the same again because, you know, I, I even get on a Facebook Live now and, you know, my, my fo- I used to get lots of people on and now I don't. Um, but you can sleep and you are authentic. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, you know, and I, I wouldn't stop because it was like this is so important to me, like for me to stick with my values because w- whenever you've got any platform, you know, and you've had a very big platform. Uh, you know, I until think- all of my social media pages actually got just pulled down with over one hundred twenty thousand people gone. Facebook yeah. first, and then Instagram gone. Yeah, and Facebook. They never don't want to know. They don't want to know. They don't even answer. It's just like, oh well, there's twelve years of all my IP and my hard work and recipes and yeah. all the herbal information, the health information, just gone. So yeah. I sold for a while and then started another one. <laughs> yeah. And but then as you said, you can sleep at night. And the thing is that whatever we, you know, my intention is always to help people. And so whatever I say or don't say matters, you know. And so if if we're promoting stuff that is not in line with helping people, then you know, I, I just won't do it. So um, and that's why I really admire that you did that because I know how hard it can be and I'm sure it was a lot harder for you than it was even for me. So, you know, good on you. Thank you. I will absolutely remember that when on those dark days when because it's difficult being different to everybody else and not following the mainstream. Yes, I mean, it's an option for me. That's who I am. But, you know, it is some days, that, you know, there's tears before bedtime for sure. Less and less as I get older, but you know, in my thirties and forties, it was really, it was my life. I dedicated my life to this, and I, and it was, it was difficult. Yeah, yeah. but worth it. Worth un- it. And unfortunately, you can't help people also that that don't want to be helped. So I always think about that too. And so you know, I was very, I, I suppose, aggressive out there in the marketplace three years ago when everything started to happen, and then and and really passionate because I'm like, I don't, I, I want. I want the best for people and that's what I thought was the best um, to give, you know, advice that I've been seeing and information that I've been seeing, but a lot of people didn't want to see it. Mm-mm. And so, you know, you can't help people that don't want to be helped. That There's actually a saying in the Vedic world, which is, you know, Indian spirituality, um, the Vedas is a textbook, but there's a, a saying in that that says worthy inquiry. So unless somebody comes to you with worthy inquiry, yeah, you, you don't want people to shove stuff down your throat if you're not ready, if you don't want to hear it. They're not the people where help wanting to educate. It's people who seek you out and want to know information, and then it's not a battle because it's just it's like talking to a brick wall and the, their ears are closed and they're shut down. So yeah. that's their trip, that's their journey, that's their karma, that's the, the the level that they're on in this in this journey. So if people are 
awake, con- living a conscious, creative life, then you'll find that they do seek you out and they do find you. And there's not so much animosity. I mean, I don't get any on my social media or in, in my world at all now. I don't get any. Yeah. Because I'm still doing it. I think that's it. It wasn't a fad that I did just to write a book on gluten free or paleo or whatever. It wasn't a fad. I'm still here. So it's they're like, oh, she actually is serious about this. <laughs> you know, she knows that's she's your life. Doing it. Yeah, it is yeah. as well. It is. Exactly. So na- doctors versus naturopaths. Hmm. So, you know, I, I think there's so much value in both. Um, but most people just go down the doctor's doctor's way, you know, uh, uh, that's a traditional way. What do you think is important? Why do you think it's important to have a naturopath in, in people's lives? To get to the root cause? Yeah. Well, this is actually in the, in the what's the word, in the uh, most true sense of the word naturopathic is because it's changing. A lot of naturopaths now are giving supplements like the Western, like Western medicine gives drugs. So it's band-aiding the symptoms. Right. We're just band-aiding, 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 and then not looking at the root cause of someone's dis-ease. So it's a lack of ease, right? Yeah. And healing means whole. That's where the word comes from. It means whole. So it's holistic. It's a whole person. Yeah. So that's the difference. We look, hopefully, ideally, look at the whole person, their whole life their relationships, everything, their work, everything. And Western medicine is band-aiding symptoms. And then those symptoms, are, are, you know, they push down and you don't notice them with when you're taking the drug, but then it creates something more sinister. And then we get, because symptoms are warnings. Symptoms are warnings. We don't have people go, oh, I hate getting period pains. I'm like, well, why have you got period pain? Let's look at addressing the issues that could be causing that because it's going to turn into something. And when you hit perimenopause or when you get a bit older as a man, as can go through menopause or andropause, yeah. it's going to blow up in your face. Everything that you haven't looked at that you've swept under that mat is going to hit you. So it depends what sort of life you want. So naturopathic, holistic, you know, um, traditional healing is looking at the whole person. Then when, you know, the old days, our ancestors, you know, we took someone to a healer which is a witch, There's, there was nurses, midwives and witches. So the witches were the herbalists. Yeah. And But the patriarchy has turned that into a negative word and it's really scary. So you're not allowed to call anyone a witch because in a negative way because it's a really positive thing. I mean, I would have been a witch for sure. Um, so Western medicine is there if you break your leg, you have a heart attack and you don't, you know, to keep you alive or, you know, something acute, we know Western medicine hasn't got a grip on pain. There's no real way to manage pain effectively and long-term without serious side effects. Yeah. So it's generally just about either looking at the cause, the root problem, the root issue of a disease or an illness and addressing that yeah. or band-aiding symptoms. Yes, we want Western medicine. Like when I broke my leg, I was straight into emergency. Yeah. You know, you want those things so there's a place for both I just think the balance is way out of whack at the moment and it's getting a little bit better but in other countries it's more so better it's much better and but here I don't know it seems like we're taking a step back lately too but that's basically it you either band-aid or look at the root cause of a problem and that's the one thing like with Rocky's prostate cancer that's what the one thing that we're really trying to look at because from our, from our research, the thing is that if you're, the environment in your body is toxic that created the cancer, then even if it, if something, you know, it got zapped by chemotherapy, which also um, affects good cells as well. Absolutely. Um, the cells. So if, if that happened, it would, it would kill, yes, the cancer cells, then kill good cells, but then it doesn't change the environment of where, how it was created. So that's what we're like, okay, well, we need to understand how that can change. How can we change the environment? Well done. Um, you know, and so that's they're, they're the rabbit holes that we're going in. Um, and, yeah, I, I think, yeah, there is time for, and we haven't, we're, we're trying to be as open-minded as possible. And by doing that, we're learning heaps. It's been actually great. And the interesting thing is my husband says it's the best he's ever felt. 
in like 30 odd years. You know, it's a blessing. I mean, I don't, when people first come to me with a cancer diagnosis, I don't stand and go, it's a blessing because they're going to smack you in the face. Right, I, I you get know? what you're saying. <laughs> it is because, you know, it, it's that jolt sometimes that you need to actually go, hold on a minute. Like you said, it's, it's like saying something's wrong here um, and you can even either look at it and start to go, okay, well, let's explore that and, and change your life in a really positive way. And I think middle age or, you know, 40 onwards, is you start to, things change, 40, 50, and, you know, you get this brutal hit of, whoa, of your mortality. And you, you can't get away with the stuff you used to get away with as you were young, if you've always been really well, I mean. Yeah. It's really difficult for people who have had really great health and then they get to 40 or 50 and they get a diagnosis. They're like, what? Wow. But it is, it's a big wake-up call to how, how do you want to spend the rest of your life? Yeah. And your children, if you're, you know, in fertile fertile years and you're having babies, like how do you want them to live? And, you know, a lot of these things are, I'm sure what you've gotten to was chemicals and pesticides. So a lot of it is hidden and it's not, it's not a sexy conversation, you know, and it's a really hard conversation. It's not like let's have peanut butter and blueberry chia pudding. Like that's great. And it's fun and it's empowering. But it's not like what sort of blueberries do you want to put in there or what sort of chia or what milk are you using because yeah. chemicals and the pesticides have a major impact on our health in the in this century and last century. Well, for the last 60 years mostly and, well, for, for the last 60 years. But people aren't going there still. They're just really not looking at the chemicals and the pesticides, the genetically modified food, the irradiation, the food colouring, all of these additives in our food that are destroying our health, we know that, body, mind, and the earth. I mean, this is all contributing to the change in the climate and the degradation and the you know the disasters we're having, the fire, the earth's on fire, the floods. But it's all a bit <sighs> scary. And it is. When I was writing my last book, Your 40-Day Transformation, that covers everything in that what what's going on with our health in detail, I was oh my god it was so overwhelming because it's such a big problem and it's and it it just flows through every area of our lives but yeah. people feel so disempowered anyway I think now don't feel in control of their lives which is one of the major factors for well-being and good health to feel like you have a purpose and you're in control of that but yeah. most people especially over the last few years do not feel like that so then when they look at that they're like oh no nah. No, it's just too hard. Mm -hmm. But there's little things you can do and you start slowly. I mean, you and Rocky just went deep dive head first in there because you got diagnosed of cancer. Yeah. But and which is brilliant. A lot of people don't even do that then. They just yeah. go back to chemo and chemo and radiation every few years and live in fear and hope it doesn't come back. Instead of empowering yeah. themselves to take control of that and kind of massively reducing the chances of being unwell again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when you're talking about toxins and I remember not knowing anything about that, you know, many years ago. And you, you had like, years of ignorant bliss, half your luck. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually think, well, first I got angry. That's Yeah, but well, that's point, normal. Yeah. Right? So, and I, that was when I realised that when, you know, when you have a baby, so when mm. I had my son Dylan, you that's when I started to think I want the best, you know, what am I going to give this baby, you know, my Off baby the boy case. and, you know, the best food, the best everything. And I thought I was making the right decisions. And, yeah. yes, this, the there wasn't social media and you couldn't just Google everything then. Uh, and I remember years later finding out how bad the shampoo was that mm. I was putting on my baby boy's head. And why even use shampoo on a baby? Full and, stop. Yeah, and and... And why is it on the still on the supermarket? And shelf? why would they allow this to be sold if it was bad for us? That's I, what I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't understand that, Janelle. I'm like, I'm like, how this is toxic, and so I was really angry. Mm. And then that sort of took me down a different path and a path of fluoride. I'm like, fluoride. Like I've been brushing my teeth with fluoride since I was a baby. Like you know, <laughs> since I was a, since I had teeth. Like, that couldn't be bad for you, could it? You know, the dentists tell me they have fluoride. That mustn't be bad for you, could it? What about the water that I'm drinking? What about? And then it's just like, oh, and I was just going through all these. I'm like, wow. 
Um, and I think the thing is with the, what I found was firstly that, that and this happened a few years ago with everything that happened in the world, was that when there's so much confusion around, most people just go back to what they know. So that's not a that's not a mistake either. Yeah, that I know. Created. The create the creation that confusion is created. Exactly. So we don't know what's right. Who to believe? Right. Or they go to the trusted source. So the trusted source is their doctor, their dentist, the celebrity that's you talked about before that's on TV saying do this thing. You know, even and taking the paycheck. Yeah, and the, even I mean politics now it's like america here now that everyone's putting a little frame around their thing saying vote this do this you know all these celebrities doing all of that and so people go to their trusted source their teacher you know the teacher that <laughs> that's at school that teaches them all the things at school um and their knowledge where do they get their knowledge who gives their knowledge you know it's it's such a a big like rabbit hole when you go down there it's um, a mess it's a mess. So you've got to be pretty freaking brave to actually go, hold on, I'm just going to be, you know, I say to my my clients, be curious, George, you know, that monkey, just be curious, George, and just, you know. Question in, everything. Question <laughs> everything. And, you know, that's what I love about kids. I say this story when, when my son was little and we went to the Melbourne Zoo and he was only like about three and we set, we're standing up, you know how they do the seal enclosures and they have the guy's got the mic, he's talking about the seals and we're up there and and he's like, has anyone got any questions? And then he goes, you young man. And I look and my son's got his little hand up and he said, how many seals are there? And I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking, Janelle, I'm thinking there's three. Oh, my goodness, like this is embarrassing. Of course there's three. Look, one, two, three, I can see them. And then the guy said, Great question because we've got three seals here and we've got another three in another um, enclosure over there. And I'm like, what an idiot I am. Like I just closed off any other option because that's all I could see. But then this little kid that's with that curiosity is going, what is what else is there? And there was more. Yeah. Behind the so there's a lot of people talking about this kind of philosophy and it's like it's yeah. liken it to being in a room and you've got a, to a dark room and you've got a torch yeah. on something. So that's what you can see. You can only see what you've got your torch on. But when the lights go on, you can see that all of this other, you know, other things that are going on. And children live in that liminal space between yeah. reality and the other world. But that is knocked out of them at school. They go to yeah. school and university and that is knocked out of them. So we learn that it's not okay to daydream. It's not okay to have an imaginary friend. It's not okay to be drawing and playing all day and, yeah. you know, get to, not okay to cry. We get conditioned into the society we live in and then your true self is hidden. That actually is the cause of a lot of disease. So yeah. authentic, auth Gabor Mate, the brilliant physician on trauma, talks about this, authenticity versus attachment. Yeah. So our number one need as humans before food and water and shelter is attachment to our tribe. Yeah. And being authentic doesn't always fit in with that. So if we have a choice, especially women, because we want to be nice and fit into everybody's lives and not cause any problems, then we're not being authentic. This is the number one driver of chronic term like chronic disease and also terminal disease so when he calls it attachment versus authenticity so either we choose to be attached to our tribe and be nice and not say what we actually mean in our, our true selves with a capital s yeah or we're authentic and then that's the brave ones who go out there and say i need to be me i want to be me you know what's and all or whatever that means hit or miss and I will cop the consequences, but it's a tough ride yeah. to do that. It's not our human instinct to to do that. But more and more people are finding that it's essential to be your authentic self. Yeah. It's essential for good health. It is. And that, that, that was a massive learning for me, Janella, because when I was young, I had a huge need to be liked. We all, we, we t especially females, I, t I mean, and males and little boys, of course, but we're really taught to do that, to fit in and be nice. And, and especially as teenagers, we don't want to be different. That's not cool. Yeah. And it took me many, many years and it still pops up now and again now, but I always think to myself, the people that are meant to be in my space will be in my space. You'll attract Anyone them. You're like, 
You like what turn on. And anyone else, I send them away with love because, and it's hard. I say this particularly like with clients that I work with because if I'm, you know, for me, I'm just, this is how I am. I'm a, uh, This is who I am and I say what I think and the great thing is I attract the people that are like-minded and it's a lot harder to work with people that aren't. You know, if they're just, if it feels like they're on another planet to me, it's just hard work. Yeah. So you, I can't and you can them. see it in their eyes. They glaze over. Yeah, yeah. They're like, can you just give me, can you just give me a zinc supplement or something? <laughs> Yeah. They think that they think I'm on another planet. <laughs> I think they're on another planet. They think I'm on another planet. So it's it's uh yeah, being just your authentic self and and I, I don't believe some people say, Oh, you know, don't worry about people not liking you. Well, no, I like to be liked, but not everyone's gonna like me and that's okay. <laughs> nice is overrated though. Yeah. It's not about being nice. I think it's about being kind and like living in loving awareness. And, yeah. you know, you know, you need to have truth with kindness as well. But nice is really overrated. It's usually quite, um, you know, people who haven't got the courage of their convictions and just go along with the crowd. And, you know, I always get worried when someone goes, oh, she's so nice. I'm like, mm. I'd rather be with around people who go, no, that's not okay. That's this actually doesn't work for me. Like conflict with your friends or your family. Yeah. It's so much better to actually express in a loving way. Yeah what the issues are because that's how we grow right we grow through these challenges rather than just going no that's okay with me I'll just be a doormat and you can walk all over me and then we get sick yeah we push it all down and we think we're too much for people which we are mostly but not for the right people and yeah. you you push it down and you get sick yeah and I think the thing is even with like with kindness right I think that I remember I did a I, I did a message on Victorian premiers <laughs> thing and my my cousin saw it and she said she said oh that's I thought you were so kind and I said to her that is being kind because <laughs> so I didn't I say bleep 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 bleep, bleep. <laughs> to stand up and to stand up for people and protect people in my mind is kind but in her mind it wasn't kind so it's really interesting people's perception of even what kindness is so but I think if if we can sleep at night and know that we've done the right thing by contributing to a better world that's right I will stand up and I will do whatever it takes and I even said to my husband I'll, I, I'd be the person out there that's gonna you know, they go oh you know they'll be pushing her down and and but you know I'm I'm ready for that because for Good me for you JJ I, you know, go JJ <laughs> We need more JJs. <laughs> um, oh, we've got two here. We've got a Janelle and we've got a Janella, so we've got another JJ. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so talking about, let's go back to toxins. What mm -hmm. sort of toxins? So for people that don't know, that haven't started to go down this rabbit hole, that are saying things like, uh, you know, don't even know what these toxins are, what are some toxins that you can go straight away that are in your house, that are in, that you put on your body, what things come to mind that you think shit, people can easily look at this and get alternatives for? Sure. I think it's important, though, to clarify the difference between exogenous and endogenous. So it's exogenous toxins are things that are in the environment outside. Ex, what are they, what's it called? Ex exogenous. So it's ex, ex is outside ex and endogenous is inside. So we have not, our body creates toxins. We That's why we detoxify, right? So we yeah, go on yeah, detox. Yeah, yeah. And spring is the best time to do that because the liver is our major organ of detox. And in spring, according to the five elements in the Chinese medicine chart, 5,000 years old, liver is most susceptible now, most sensitive now. So this is a good time in spring to detox. So we have natural toxins that our five elimination channels are trying to, well, are getting, hopefully, pushing out, are detoxifying. Yeah. So that's a struggle in itself. I mean, that's a full-time job in the body to get rid of toxins. But then we have these outside sources of toxins that we never had really, I mean, like this on the planet that we're, it's unavoidable actually. I mean, it's in, they're in the soil, they're in the waters, they're in the plants, they're in our bodies, they're in our food, they're in our water, they're in everything. So it's really difficult to, well, you can't avoid them so we need to make sure our elimination channels are working really well to get them out 
And it's, there's things that block the elimination channels, other chemicals, which we'll talk about, but emotions as well that are attached to each of those or associated with those different organs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, different, if we're not moving, if we don't, but basically per our emotions uh, and food, other things that um, are in cosmetics and all the toxins in our cos- cosmetics. Yeah. So there's chemicals, natural occurring chemicals, and then there's toxic chemicals. So we want to avoid as much as we can, like, yeah. you know, you know, that, what was that, that prayer they use in, in 12 steps and I had it in high school actually, accept the things you cannot change and you know, have the serenity to know the things you cannot change and the things you can and the wisdom to know the difference. So we yeah. know that there's some things we cannot control and there's, which is overwhelming and that disempowers us and there's things that we can. So basically, so what you're asking is how can we, where are they? How do we identify them? Yeah. So in the last 60 years after World War II, there was all these, all these chemicals left over from warfare. So these companies and and the governments went, what are we going to do with all this stuff? And so they started to grow our food with them. So there's a great quote by Jane Goodall, you know, Jane Goodall, who's, you know, the monkey ape lady who's divine. She's got a quote that says, one day we'll look back on this dark era of agriculture and wonder how on earth it was ever a good idea to grow our food with poisons. So they're poison and we grow our food with them. So this is why people say, oh, organic, you know, why would I bother? It's so expensive. And how do you even know it's organic? Unless it's organic or you know it's spray-free, your food has been grown with poisons. Yeah. It, that's a really hard pill to swallow because people yeah. are buying all this stuff. And, I mean, oats is one of the crops that is the most sprayed with glyphosate or Roundup is the trademark name. Mm. So you're, that's an, that was patented as an antibiotic when it first came out it's an antibiotic so every time we're eating well most foods are sprayed with glyphosate and so many more there's 3,000 plus registered chemicals and most of us have no idea where they are what they're doing so I mean the they're everywhere. So then in all of our foods, in our water, everywhere. So and then it's not just our food, it's our cosmetics, our shampoo, like you were talking about, our skincare, our toothpaste, our soap, our body wash, our tampons, our pads, everything, all, all of our cosmetics. And then gardening, you know, there's all the weed killers and growth enhancers that we're breathing in and they're airborne. So the birds and the animals are moving them from place to place. And also in you know, plastics, obviously, I mean, you can't, they're everywhere. Plastics in our food, in our drinking bottles, our packaging. So cosmetics and food and gardening and plastics and all our medications as well. So the, and, you know, aspirins, pharmaceuticals, any of the drugs that we're taking are chemical toxins as well. So they're called xenoestrogens. So xeno means foreign or stranger in Latin and estrogen is our hormone that men and women both have. Women obviously have a a bit more, but it's, it's important for bone growth. It's important for effective and proper blood clotting. It's not just about women's fertility. It's there's so much more that we need estrogen for. And we have receptors in our bodies for, for estrogen. So they say these are our receptors that my hands up. And estrogen will grab onto them. So xenoestrogen mimics our own estrogen. Right. So the body can't tell the difference between these chemicals, these toxic chemicals, yeah. and our own estrogen, which is really incredible in itself and interesting mm-hmm. to ponder um, why that is. But it's the the estrogens come in, the xenoestrogens. So if you eat, if you use some fluoride toothpaste and then you have some tap water and you wash your hair with a supermarket shampoo and you've had some a breakfast cereal that's not spray free and full of additives and coloring you've already got I mean just they reckon women put on at least 500 chemicals a day just in their cosmetics just in cosmetics so your body then is grabbing a whole lot of extra estrogen so it's called it's a condition called estrogen dominance or excess estrogen so this causes Lots of different types of cancer, especially breast, uterine, testicular, prostate, all the things that are where there's more estrogen. Yeah. 
and endometriosis, fibroids, anxiety, behavioral issues. You know, there's it's it's a lot of different things that it's causing. So estrogen dominance, you can try and, you know, eat well and take out junk food because that's a big place where it is as well. All of these, you know, estrogens, because the genetic genetically modified food yeah. is itself estrogenic. So you're just piling estrogen on and weight gain and depression. So, but you need to get rid of the chemicals. It almost doesn't matter what you're eating if you're eating organic or chemical free, you can eat anything. Yeah. And the countries that live, that have the most octogenarians or centenarians, sorry, are living over a hundred, they live in these villages and communities either at the top of the hill or, you know, on a river with clean water and clean air. They're not surrounded by all these estrogens that cause all sorts of problems. Wow. There's a, there's a new um, on Netflix called Blue Zones. Yeah, I watched it. it. So that- did you watch it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I would, yeah. I mean, this is common knowledge. I mean, it, it's yeah. basic common sense, but common sense is not so common, right? Yeah. And it's brilliant that it's on Netflix. I've been telling everyone to watch it or recommending they do yeah. because it brings the Mediterranean diet back in, which yeah. is the healthiest diet. We know that after much research and just watching people over the millennia, whole grains yeah healthy legumes are an important part of beans and legumes are are important chickpeas you know kidney beans important part of any diet when it comes to health and longevity and well-being and fruits and vegetables are a major part of it a little bit of meat lots of good oil some red wine not red wine full of sulfur dioxide which is most wines that we buy and eating a clean life and having a purpose Having a purpose and moving, like, you know, they were talking about in this that we used to do the vacuuming, now we have the little robos running around and we moved and we gardened and we were active and now we're sitting in our desks all day, a lot of people, and then we move to the couch to watch TV and we get in the car on the way home or the train and not really exercising and we don't have control. You know, there was one guy they were talking about, I think he was at the Mayan in Costa Rica, and he's been herding goats his whole life and he was saying that's his purpose. He can control that. Yeah. He can get up and he knows that. We don't know what we can control and what's going to happen. So then there's the f- anxiety is a very relevant response to what's going on in our world. Yeah. It's not to be medicated or to be diagnosed as a problem. It is an appropriate response because we don't feel like, oh, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do that and that's going to make a difference in the world and I'm going to get up with determination and go to bed with a sense of, you know, um, achievement. Yeah. Really. So, I mean, I know, yeah, it's a great show and everybody should be watch, have a look at that for sure. But it really, it's just stripping back all the crap that we've been taught to believe that, you know, you take this or you take that pill or you do that or you do that. And then we're frustrated and we're still putting on weight and we're still sick and we're still anxious and we still feel hopeless without a purpose and what we all here for. And, and it gets too hard. So we're just going to watch another episode of, you know, Narcs or whatever. So it it's great to show, keep it simple. If we can just simplify everything, this is just simplify it. So take, get rid of chemicals and it's not hard and it's not, exp- I mean, it was 20 years ago, but now it's not expensive. You can shop at farmer's markets. You can, there's health food sections in supermarkets. And there's levels you can do. I mean, you don't have to start away, start straight away being plastic free. That's really difficult as well. And you don't have to be gluten free or vegan or, you know, dairy free. It's about just concentrating on buying the foods that are chemical free, which is organic. Yeah. And yeah, and that's that's how we well prior to to what happened with my husband with um, prostate cancer, I'd started that journey and. I, I started substituting things. So yeah, that was the first thing that, yeah, that was the first thing I started to do. And one of the cha- most challenging was perfume because I love perfume. That was the, that was my, I'm sure everyone's got their thing, that, but that was really challenging for me. I'm like, well, you know, I didn't want essential oils. I didn't want that. I wanted something, um, I don't know. I finally found a, a perfume, which was great. One, I've got one. <laughs> That's all you know. But it took me a while. But even, you know, from changing from fluoride to toothpaste, getting a water filter, getting, uh, you know, and just, yeah, just adapting all my makeup, all my skincare is all organic or natural. I can eat my lipstick, you know. And you're glowing, aren't you? You're glowing. 
<laughs> um, and I love it. Like, and and like my products that I'm getting because it did take me a while to get the ones that I liked. Mm. I love them much more than the ones before. And you don't waste them, do no. you? No. And just, but knowing that, like, you're putting something on your skin that is is good for you. You know, it's good. It makes you feel good. It's not going to, you know, do something and, you know, it's not toxic. So. Or to the planet. Can I ask you, JJ, why it was perfume? Why you were stuck on your perfume? I, you it's know, usually hair care for women. It's usually hair care is the last thing. But yours was perfume. Yeah, so mine was perfume. What was it? I don't know. And the funny thing I was talking about, saying about that, Janella, I laughed at myself today because he's us having this this um, Zoom meeting. I'm, I'm thinking, isn't it great that you can have like a Zoom meeting and you can still have like Ugg boots on, right? <laughs> but you know what? I've still got perfume on. But you can't smell me. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm interested. So I it's know. about pheromones, right? Yeah. So it's like it's it's. Again, it's part of our conditioning. Of it's part of your identity that you're. Yeah, of who we think we are. And that's why I think it's even challenging for changing things because we're being conditioned from such a young age that that's what you do. I remember oh, I have this conscious. really strong memory of going to the dentist when I was little and getting the Colgate toothpaste and the Mini toothbrush chew. and my dentist saying this is what you do this is how you brush your teeth uh you know at a very very young age brainwashing so to actually yeah and to actually adjust that when you, you when you're older it, it can be really challenging there comes the rage as you said <laughs> yeah what have they done to me we're all little robots yeah and then things that you know they still and it's such a long process for me like even I said to to my husband Rocky, I said, you know, I've got like um, mercury in my mouth from fillings. Get that out, JJ. I, I know. So I'm gonna, and I hate the dentist. <laughs> I hate it. Go to a holistic dentist. Yeah, I, I will. Get gas. Get some gas. Go to La La Land and get them out. <laughs> uh, and I had, you know, years ago, I had a root canal. I didn't know how bad a root canal was. And just recently I went to the dentist. I had to, I had a toothache. And he, the first thing he said was root canal. I said, no. Mm. And he said to me, don't go Googling. Google don't go enough. educating yourself, Missy. Don't go Googling. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to Google. I, do <laughs> I already know that I don't want, you know, don't, don't, he said, don't go Googling, you know, all this stuff out there. We know best. That's why the world's in such a great state. So with the root canal on that, you look at where the what meridian that's on and then you treat that organ. Yes. So there's meridians that run through our bodies yeah. and they a lot of them end up, you know, they go through our jaw or, or end there, some of them. So if it's your kidney or your liver or maybe it's your liver and your liver's full and you can't detox, so it's backing up. When your liver can't detox these toxins out and the estrogens, it'll back up and that you'll get a symptom somewhere in your body. And we usually band-aid that with a painkiller, wherever it is. So you look at that and you go, oh, okay, that's my kidney. That's fear and anxiety. That's about, you know, my water levels. And so you look and you treat it with some herbal medicine or, or some food for your kidney. Yeah. If it's not too far gone, if you've left it too far, like anything, you you know, herbal medicine isn't great for something that's really, you know, gotten to the point where there's no turning back. Yeah. The yeah. interesting thing about that, you know, I did leave it too long, Janella, but um, the interesting thing about that is how everything is freaking connected. Everything. I was having like a, a, a really bad cough and I could not get rid of this cough. It was horrible. And then I realised it's like a nose drip. Uh, and I thought it might be something to do with the sinuses. As soon as that tooth was gone, everything was solved. There you go. Um, and, I, and that's what, you know, I look at, say, with Rocky's thing, it's like what's connected? You know, you were talking about you know, the um, toxins and the, what was it called, the X. Ex- exogenous and end, endogenous and exogenous. So you just think external or internal. Yeah, and that affects your hormones, yeah? yeah. Well, it, they're estrogens. Estrogens. So does estrogen, so so Rocky, for instance, had um, a, a rash on his back for ages. And I'm like, is that 
How's that connected? Like I'm always like, how could that be connected to the prostate? Good how woman. Could, you know, and so everything. What? How? Is it his be- lower back? Yes. Is Rocky mind us talking about this? No, no, no. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> so your lower back is your kidney area. It's oh. also so, and it's also your first chakra. So you, first and second. So it's about your roots, your grounding, your your family of origin, your sense of country, your your sense of connection to country, as the Indigenous First Nations people talk about. It's yeah. so important to know where you come from and your ancestral line. But if that gets rocked, so during COVID, so many people were coming with kidney lower back things. And that's teeth, ears, hair, knees, all the things that the kidney rules mm-hmm. and I was talking to other kinesiologists about it saying what are people mostly yeah kidney lower back first chakra because it was our sense of safety of security that we're safe in the world that's the kidney so yeah. we didn't feel that like most people didn't feel that they're like everything we thought mm-hmm. that was okay and being looked after isn't actually and anything could change in a moment and the fear came up because that's not great for humans to feel like that we don't need we need to feel secure and safe and that we're in charge of our own lives so a lot of people were coming with lower back things and hip it's also your hips and then that's a it was probably a fungal rash by the sounds of it so that's candida and that's um each estrogen feeds candida feeds on estrogen so the more estrogen you bring in you get candida but where the rash comes in is where you look at how, where it's affecting in your body. So it was affecting him in his sense of his very base sense of who he is, where he is in the world. I've already asked permission that we could talk about this and how secure and safe he feels and what he's been doing up until now. And it does he want to change? Like, do you want to change that? Is it something that, and that's enormously, that is a huge overhaul and deep work to look at. Yeah. WTF you know like is this what I need to so that I mean and then to put on these cortisone creams and to cover that up is just I just feel like it's such a shame because your body's going dude I've been warning you for years (laughs) and now it's gonna hurt and it's interesting where you get it like I got a fungal rash once on my face before I had to film (laughs) and it's just and it's like okay right so it was, you need to look at that and go, why is that? And what area is that on? Like cheeks is your stomach. And the stomach is where I was ruled by Virgo. I have a Virgo moon. That is it is where I hold my stress. And I knew I was, my integrity was being challenged. Yeah. And it was like, this is the face you're showing the world and you've got a fungal rash on it. So you need, what aren't you looking at here with this? I mean, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And we've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years in healing and in just being individuals and humans on this path. So I, it's just, we've just been really spoiled. Sorry, I forgot to turn my email off. We're just really spoiled with, um, not spoiled, we've been conditioned to band-aid things and that's what you do. And so people are a bit lazy, actually. We don't want to just take that next step and go, okay, I'm not going to take that. Panadol or whatever drug, I'm actually going to look at that and go, why have I got a headache? Did I drink enough water today or yesterday? Like it could be something as simple as that. Just look, yeah. symptoms are a blessing. Yeah. One one thing that's just popped up when you were just talking and it, it's like we're so also conditioned to the life that we should be lead, leading. Yeah, you well, it's mean? not the way it should be. It's not the way that we want it to be. Yeah. I, I remember when my son was, and we talked about school before, when my son was 15 and he, and he hated school, my son, and he wanted to leave. And I'm like, you can't leave. Like, that isn't what you do. You know, so I had, <laughs> because, you, you know, the conditioning is go to school, blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's the process. You get a job, you get married, you have children. That's that's what you do. You become a doctor or whatever. Don't you dare buck the system, mate. I know. <laughs> and uh, and that was, you know, one of the times that we sh- shook up my belief system in regards to what's possible. And my son stopped school, school at 15. He's the smartest frigging person I know. He has, he's got more education after school than he ever had. It's not for everybody, right? Yeah. And he's the one that challenges me with my thinking all of the time. That's what kids are supposed to do. The next generation is supposed to benefit from the one yeah. before and we, they're there to teach us and we're there to teach them. But yeah. unfortunately in generations 
over the last you know few hundred years that hasn't been the case it's you yeah. respect your elders and they know better but really look at the mess they've left look at the mess we've left for the for the boom um for the next generation for the gen X, what are the zeds yeah they're just um no where's it what are they called the um i don't the know kids now the next one millennials the millennials like we've left a big mess you know it's not like we've been doing it all right and it's not for everyone and that's why we have trades and that's why we have art school and that's why we have music conservatoriums and for people like your son who are creative thinkers and want to live a creative life to not be conditioned within an inch of their lives I mean it suits some people it suits some people and half their luck you know but other people it doesn't yeah but I think that we, we are conditioned in so many different ways. And even when you said about my husband, Rocky, when when we found out that he had prostate cancer, I said to him, and we've just built a house right near the beach and I've got my business, and I said to him, I don't care what happens, stop work. Just just, just stop. And, and I'm happy for you to stop. Let's just stop. Let's just. And he's like, I can't stop. I'm like, yes, you can. Just, just stop. Hard to stop. <laughs> best thing that he's ever done you know because he's just been taking walks he's been doing infrared saunas he's been do, you know he's going to go fishing this week uh and i think that we're so conditioned to this is the life we must lead and it's very money driven as well for most people it's like you've got to have the certain house a certain car the certain you need to make money to pay your mortgage and, and to live as well yeah um and so i just think that Sometimes I think it's empowering to actually say, you know what, there's other paths. There's always other paths. And it maybe takes it's courage. Path, yeah, it takes courage and maybe it's not the path that you thought it would be, but maybe there's a better path. You just don't know it yet. And so that's that's how I sort of think all the time. It's like let's just see what the other path is. This, if it doesn't feel right, this path, let's just go somewhere else. And Right, let's and travel. Yeah. And in Taoism, it says when you start to walk out on the way, the way appears. Like it can look really dark and scary and full of clouds and unknown, the unknowns, and you look out and go, oh, no, I'm just going to stay here because I don't, you know, better the devil I know. But there's an old saying that once you start to walk, it will appear once you yeah. walk out there. Yeah, yeah, you just got to keep doing it. So the question I've also got is in regards to because with your I think habits are really important you know habits in your life in regards to toxins to you know eating as healthy as you can exercising as as best you can what what habits have you got Janella that you go you know these are the things that are like my non-negotiables that I do every single day whether it be for your mindset for your your, moving your body what are the things that you do on a consistent basis that that's worked for you I think it's important not to even think every single day because yeah. that's an addiction and an attachment. It's things that you yeah. want to do really, you know, that make you feel yeah. good and that it's mostly you do them yeah. um, because, you know, some people will miss a day of something and they freak out and hate themselves about it. It's yeah. really not that. It's just what, you, and like people go, how many sunflowers should I eat to get my fiber? It's like, it's not really about that. It's about yeah. including things in your life generally. So, yeah. I mean, I love exercise because I've got a crazy monkey mind. So I, like most of us, so I need to exercise, but I love to exercise. So we go to the beach most days, Harley and I, and, or we go for a walk and we live in the hinterlands of Byron. So we go for a walk. I meditate for 20 minutes. I sit in the morning and I love that. And uh, I cook like a crazy person. So I'm always <laughs> cooking. That's my creative outlet and I'm in the garden I mean I live on seven acres and I've just regenerated seven acres of weed into native wonderland which is a beautiful creek so there's often stuff to do in the garden moving around and connection to my community and my friends is really important because I find that's my biggest challenge because I'm I've studied a lot and I research a lot and I'm quite um happy in my own company yeah. And but then I notice after a few days I start to get some dark negative thoughts and start to go loopy a little bit. And so and I feel the best at the end of the day when I've had some connection with my and not I mean I'm always, we're always on the phone with your friends. I am anyway, but to see them, to actually see them and meet them for a walk and connect with people and not in a in a fun way, you know, and just yeah. talk. That's really important. So I've made that 
really um, a priority in the last few years to not work. Or, I mean, I I study and work. I love it. You know, I write. And so, and that fulfills me, but it is important to keep your connections up and not just on the phone and to see people. Um, yeah. So that, they're the things. And I shop, I mean, I go to the farmer's markets, but, and I grow a lot of my own things and I get a lot of pleasure out of putting my food in bottles and containers and having them organized in the kitchen and the pantry. And I feed a lot of other people as well. Yeah. So I do meals for homeless and charity and my gardener who helps me do the heavy stuff, James, we do contra. So I feed him for the day that he comes to help me. And he's been, he was, had a few health challenges and he had no idea about any of this and thought it was a bit woo woo. But now he's seeing his health improve when I give him food yeah. for the gardening. And I just, I love doing that because that's one, and he's got children and a partner. That's one family now that's empowered and knows how to look after themselves and feed themselves and look after their health. I, I go to bed pretty early. I, my eyes are closing at seven o'clock. 730. 7 o'clock. I know. And you know, so many of my friends are night owls. And so they're like, really? They're just ready, you know, to have a chat at eight o'clock. I'm, I'm done. But they know that now. But then I want to talk to them at six o'clock in the morning. And they're like, You're an early riser. Yeah. 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 I'm born at 5 a.m. They say that has, you know, what the time you were born has a lot to do with it. Yeah, I'm up. I mean, I was born in Brisbane in the summer. And so it's hot, right? Yeah. Like it's fourth what fifth of september here now and it's 30 degrees it's it's in at in byron it's hot so yeah no i like getting up and going for doing my exercise doing my thing and then i'm in bed early i really like doing that yeah and those baths so i have a bath on the veranda under the you know outside so i can i've got that little my phone with the app on it that i can check out what planet's looking at me and what <laughs> what's going where and then i look at how close it is to the earth and what effects that's having with the moon and the lunar phases and with gravity and people's menstrual cycles I could spend hours in the bath I actually do I listen to my podcast catch up on all my you know research then love it love it and talk on the phone then so it's that's the a feminine ritual that's about the divine feminine as well and a lot of I have have had a tendency to be quite masculine in my doing and do 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 until you drop and most of us have men and women so I've made it since perimenopause when I had a burnout crash after a miscarriage at 45, like I just went down Yeah. twice. I got better and did it again because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Not an idiot. I had a slow learner. So now I really make sure I put in those divine feminine rituals into my, like the meditation, the yin things, the being things. Not So being versus doing. So I do, I don't feel guilty about, afternoon naps so in the afternoon I do some um stretching and meditation and some chanting and then I usually doze off for especially since giving up caffeine a few months ago I have a little doze off and then I'm um, feel amazing after that like 10 or 20 minutes lying on the floor getting my progesterone just lying and my rose quartz mask some a sound bath in my ears or on the speakers just giving yourself a boost of bringing the energy or qigong bringing energy in from the universe into your body rather than expending it all day i used to there's a lighthouse in byron here i used to run that three or four times a week on top of my normal exercise that's insane like it was just too yang it was too much especially as i was getting to menopause when i was supposed to be we're supposed to be gentle to ourselves yeah so, but then you have to look at, okay, so my body's changing and I, you know, I'm going to put on weight probably because I'm not, but I, you don't really, you, it all changes and you you feel better for it, but you have to listen to balancing the masculine and the feminine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about slowing down is what I, and I'm, I try not to give myself too much to do in one day now. Before it was like, oh, how am I getting, like most people, you can have it all. Yeah how am I going to get all of this done? Like it was just this panic all the time. And now I want to enjoy my life a bit more and be conscious of enjoying it instead of having this hell bent need to help other people. And that comes from wanting to be um, of help, of service. Yeah, I hear you. 
And I bet I'm, you do, JJ. <laughs> I'm the, I know. I'm in the same. I feel like I'm in the same space. Like I, I was just so running on that masculine energy, yeah. And success and well, we're praised to do, for doing that. That's what we yeah. get praised for. Oh, look at you, you're so great, and blah blah blah. It's like, no, I don't want to do that. Get yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing I wasn't good at is actually just stopping and feeling. I remember. Uh, I had uh, someone say to me about just stopping and feeling. And I remember I went to the beach and I actually was feeling and I thought, and you talked about your stomach, I had all this tension in my stomach. And I'm like, I think I actually have lived with that. And all not the time. noticed it. Yeah. Because I just, I was just going. I wasn't yeah. feeling what was in yeah. my body. And uh, and yeah. then we go to the doctor and they say you've got IBS because they've caught up to IBS, but now they don't know that it's SIBO actually, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And all that tension you are fully holding in your tummy all the time will create candida and bacterial overgrowth and mess your whole gut up, which then messes your head up because of the connection between your head and your gut. And you go on this whole merry-go-round of doctor's appointments and expensive, you know, supplements, which don't work. And they might for a minute because it, and it's all because you're holding tension in your stomach, which is also your chakra called the solar plexus, which is about your personal power and your will, which in most of us has been, has been smashed. So we're just holding this there because we're just living on the edge instead of just, I mean, that's why I have those times in the morning, in the afternoon to sit and just watch my thoughts go by like clouds and go, what are the most pertinent thoughts here? What are the ones that keep coming in? And and then feel my body and where I'm holding the stress when I'm doing it. I mean, for me, I mean, this is where medical astrology comes in. For me, it's in my gut and my reproductive organs. So endometriosis and gut problems. Yeah. I haven't had any other issues anywhere. It's all it's all there. And so if I can relax those two things, I don't I can eat anything without and the funny thing is it or not funny, but I've got endometriosis as well. So but you'll have some Scorpio in your chart. My tension is. Yeah, I mean, with a lot of us women do because that's our power center as well. So we could, yes. I mean, there's a whole lot we could talk to um, about that. And what I wanted to say, JJ, and I didn't mention this before, is I've actually written an ebook on estrogen dominance. I was just reading it this morning. Going, oh, I should put that up for your listeners. Yes, yes. To, I'll put it on um, my Insta in the bio so they can yes. click on it. And there's a recipe there. And it's all what we discuss because it's a lot, right? It's overwhelming on my. So it's yeah. everywhere where the toxins are, you pretty much, you know, your cosmetics, your food, your cooking, your pots and pans, everything, and how to get rid of it and how to help your liver and your five elimination channels to detox effectively, things that can yeah. help those. And, um, yeah, all of that, it just covers it all. So I think that might be helpful if people are sitting at home going, what? Yeah. You know, this is all a bit too much. Fabulous. And you've got heaps on your website as well that I've seen. So oh, your good. books and your um, books on all different things, uh, which is really amazing. You got it's all about good health, right? Yeah. It's all about holistic. It's holistic. It's ho ho healing. healing means whole. So you have to look at all the – well, I talk about the eight different factors that are, that are needed for good health and it's not just food. That's one. Yeah, love it. And so what's what's next for you, Janelle? Yeah. Saying, yeah, What? because I know you're doing retreats, which is so exciting. I actually said to hubby, I said, I want to get to Byron Bay soon because, as you know, we've got a little puppy. Yeah, so beautiful. Take our puppy with us. Do you, do you do cooking classes and stuff like that? What do you do? I do them for the private retreats. Um, You can do whatever you want. Yeah. So we design them for you. So, yeah, my kitchen's here and the the cabin where people stay is there about 100 meters away so we if they want to do massage or astrology sessions or go for horse riding on the beach or they want cooking sessions classes with me or whatever we just yeah absolutely I mean they get fed I cook every meal but if they want to watch me while I'm doing it they can do that or and or have cooking classes or we go to the bulk food shops or the health food stores or the markets together to actually you know, in person, show people how you start this or something. It depends what level you're at. Some people are a long way down the path. So we we just tailor it for individuals. Yeah, love it. Love so what's it. next? What's next is I've got, I'm at the end of a nine cycle now in, in a couple of months at the next birthday. So our lives, we go in nine year cycles. So I'm about to, yeah, it's, it feels very fresh. It's spring. It feels like spring. It's the start of a new cycle. So yeah, I've got a few all in the same you know, 
what I do. It's all the same, but I'm thinking about how I can be, because I've spent the last few years regening this property and I bought this property to do group healing retreats here, Yeah, but it's taken the DA and the council regulations and everything. It means I'm not going to do them here. So um, I've got a few plans for what's next, but watch this space. So how can people follow you? Easy. You just put my name in anywhere and it will... So Instagram, I mean, I do not much, but a bit on Instagram. I go through stages. Um, Facebook, um, that's the main places. But I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do a whole new website and teaching panel is what I'm um, education panel with everything on it. Right. So if you want to know anything, you can just click boxes. So it'll be under, you know, toxins. Get the download. Breakfast, cancer whatever it'll all just be there and i'm going to yeah. do new new videos and filming and right yeah love just love that. Right. i'm ready love it love it 55 <laughs> is good man it's hard between 45 and 55 was like looking at all your stuff and what you want to unpack and what you don't want anymore and what's not working for you and it's hard like there's no question about that but it's really empowering and then I knew, I've heard and I've read and seen women in the next stage at the autumn queen stage, this the autumn time, the third stage of our life before crone, the wise woman, is the best time of our lives. Yeah. And I'm starting to feel like that now. It feels like, okay, okay, let's go again. Yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. But gently and slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All righty. We're, we're up to the rapid fire questions. And you've got some for me. Oh, are they rapid? Yeah, yeah, they're rapid. Okay. All right. Am I going first or am I I'm asking? Gonna, I'm going to do you first. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to ponder though, but okay. Oh, yeah, you one. can ponder a little bit. Okay. So your first one is the best piece of advice given to you. Slow down. Slow down. If you were, this is, this is the one I was telling you about before that I thought of this morning. <laughs> if you woke up in jail... What would you likely be jailed for? Oh, rebellious thought, rebellious protest. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I thought, yeah, Did you? What would I be jailed for as well. <laughs> I'm not okay with these rules. <laughs> yeah. Um, who would play you in a movie? Or who would I like to play me in a movie? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't can we come back to that one? I'll think about it while we're doing the other. Am I allowed? Is that part of the rules? Yeah, yeah, it's part of, you can say that. Sigourney Weaver? Oh really? I That's was thinking, I was thinking. Who? I was thinking of oh what's uh Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh, it's exactly who I was thinking the first thing when you said it, but I went, really? That's vain. Is that what you that thought? Is, that is exactly who I thought of. Although people have said to me, geez, you like um Who's the one that was on that? Um, you know, she's the South America Spanish and she's on that Modern Family, I think. Oh, yes, so Sophia. Yes, people tell me I'm like her because <laughs> I'm a bit zany. But I also think they're both very beautiful women. And so I didn't yeah. want to say that. So, and I've just been watching Sigourney Weaver on this net, um, series. Yeah. She's eight, nearly 80 now, I think. But I like her strength oh. and her you know, her crone way, how she's ageing and hasn't had any work done and she's got the courage of her convictions. And so let's make a blend of Eva Long, um, Sophia, Catherine and um, Sigourney. Yeah, beautiful. Um, what's one thing on your bucket list? Going to Japan and taking people on a spiritual walk next year. Oh, how amazing. I'm so oh, doing that. Man. And my best male friend that we, we studied together in the 90s, he's a Qigong master and Chinese medicine um, expert. And he's, I said, why don't we do this next year? And he goes, why don't we take people with us? And I went, oh, yes. So that's one of the things that we've got on the list for next year. I want to take people to to walk yeah. through these spiritual places in all over the world, but we're going to start with Japan. Beautiful. I love Japan. What would you change about the world? <laughs> What would I not change about the world? <laughs> uh, greed, um, control, um, yeah, greed and control, uh, ego, tripping, 
yeah. are the top 1% controlling the rest of the world and they're not doing a very good job. Yeah. What would I change is, is people, oh, you know what I would change? Going from, we're now in an I culture and we need, we used to be in a we culture, we society. So changing from a I centered to we centered, whatever we do to each other, we're doing to ourselves and the planet. So to make people help people be aware of that, of the connection between everything. Yeah. Love that. What's your favorite thing to cook or eat? Vegetables. Any particular vegetable? It's your favorite veggie. Oh, lately it's been fennel. Lately it's been fennel. The other day. And that's a good detox. So that's a good one to get rid of estrogen as well. Yeah, and it's great for bloating and pain in your gut and for weight loss because of digestive problems. Yeah, I'm all over fennel lately. I put it in soups, I bake it, I make put it in hummus and make tahini cream. Yeah, fennel. And it's a seed, a herb, and a vegetable. <laughs> if you could have five people currently if they're dead or alive to have dinner with, who would you choose? Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis. Um, uh, Greta, oh God, her name's just gone. You know, the feminist from the, who's still alive. Stenberg? No. No. And they've made all the movies, Mrs. America about her, the movies. Uh, you know, and she's the, oh my gosh, this is menopause brain. Um, her. <laughs> Get, oh, that's so weird. She started Miss Magazine in the 60s. Rose Byrne just played her in a miniseries a couple of years ago. It'll come to me as soon as I'm off this. <laughs> um, okay, that's three. Oh, Ram Dass. Yeah. Spiritual teacher. Definitely Ram Dass. Um, maybe... Um, well, these, these aren't quick fire ones. These are ones you have to kind of think about. <laughs> So people who are trained, Jesus. Yeah. You wouldn't mind hanging out with Jesus. Love I can't, believe, it. I can't remember her name. I'm Googling it. Yeah. All right. Your next one is what would you tell your 17-year-old self? Slow down. Slow down. What is something that <laughs> not many people know about you? Um, Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem. That's who I was trying to think of before. The oh. feminist Gloria Steinem. Um, that I'm an introvert and uh, introvert and highly sensitive. Yeah. Because you come across as quite extrovert. I know. As well, yeah. Good actor. Yeah. <laughs> what legacy do you want to be remembered for? That I helped pe people learn how to eat well and live well and live a happier, healthier, more contented, more purpose-driven life, yeah. an easy, an easier life. Yeah, beautiful. I love that. All right, I'm ready for my my ones now. He's Go nervous. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot Gloria Steinem's name. Um, okay. What's been your favourite decade so far? My favourite decade? Wow, that's an in-depth question, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> so you. You're not going to let me off easy, Janella. Uh, my favourite decade. I would have to say, and that's, wow, that's really got me. Nine more of those. That's, that's, <laughs> that's making me dig deep because I'm actually going to say this last decade and it's probably been the most challenging, but it's more like it's I've come into my own and I, I'm more me rather so than where the growth is. A facade of, of, of me. The mask has really dropped. Such so a beautiful guess. thing to be able to say that. Yeah. Um, if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh I would love to, oh, there's a lot of things I'd love to do, but the first thing that comes to mind is I would love to be a host on TV and actually delve into stuff that people don't delve into. You'd be great at that too. Into interviews and stuff like that. 
but I wouldn't be allowed. So it would never happen. That's why there's the internet and you can do it if you want on that before you're taken down. Um, okay, great. Where where do you hold your stress? But you kind of answered that before. Yeah, my lower. And sometimes here. Your heart. Sometimes here, my heart. And then sometimes in my my mostly down my stomach. But sometimes I know. Even your stomach or your abdomen? Just under your breasts or where you're below your belly button? Um, no, below my belly button. Yeah, right. So your abdomen, your reproductive yeah. area, second chakra. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so my next question is what do you do about it once you recognise it's there and upon you? So now I stop and I breathe and I ask myself questions about what that is. So I was um, trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah. So I just give myself space, which I never, for many, many years, I never, ever did that. And I'm talking, and I've been a coach for many years, and I've probably only been doing that for the last year or so. So great. Yeah. (laughs) What did you like doing as a child? I loved performing. So I used to dance. I was a professional dancer. And so I used, I loved that. I loved performing, um, yeah, just being out there and making people happy. <laughs> Where's your happy place, internal or external? Both. <laughs> yeah, where, where is it? Like, where is it? Yeah. So when you're meaning, so internal, like when you're, cooking or when you're meditating or when you're just having a happy thought or when you're with Rocky or we yeah, all of the above like where where are you happiest yeah so my happy place is definitely the kitchen because I love to cook and I love to feed and I love to give give my love through food so that's my happy place and the beach we have a lot in common yeah <laughs> Um, what could you eat every day for the rest of your life? Or oh, mostly, you know? Yeah. Um, what could I eat? That's a challenging question as well. Um, I, I, see, I love warming foods. I love, like, I love my porridge in the morning. I know you talked about oats. They are organic, but I love my. They're brilliant for you. I love my oats with, with my fruit in it. And it just like. Yeah, I love that comfort, comforting food. And there's your happy place too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I make it look pretty. I put all the berries and the nuts and, you know, and I make it a, a, a good time to just sit down and eat and enjoy it. Brilliant. Yeah. What What is this one? Uh, what do you do when the power goes out when you have no Wi-Fi? Uh, when the, you freak the, out. If the power's out, I put my candles on. <laughs> yeah, and what do you do? And what do I do? Well, if it's light enough, I'll read because I love to read. I love to read. That's one of the things that I love. The other thing we love as a family is we love playing games. Mm. And sometimes they're board games and other times we make up games. <laughs> yeah, you connect, right? Before we yeah. had all these modern cons, you connected with each other. Yeah. And the other thing I love is a bath as well. I haven't got the outside bath, but I love a bath. You can get one. Yeah. You can just. I have a toes from my bathroom inside out my bedroom window into the ta- into the bath outside yeah and then I use that water on my plants in the morning you don't need to plumb it all in you can make one a little yeah. make- love it um who's one person you'd like to have at a very long lunch who's one person you'd like to have a very long lunch with uh oh it would be Rocky wants you to uh, say Rocky. No, no, I've had many, many, many yeah. lunches with him. Uh, it would, well, definitely would be Jesus, as you mentioned before. Um, the other person I would say is Tony Robbins. Hmm. I just love to get inside his head. Because what he's, that's another thing that I would actually do when you said what I would like to do. I'd love to run massive events like he does. Yeah, you've got that in you for yeah. sure. What do you like most about yourself? Um, what I love most about myself is my genuine compassion to help others that I got from my mum. <laughs> Lucky. 
Um, how do you quieten your mind? I think you kind of answered that, but how do you quieten your mind? I quiet my mind by going to the beach, reading, um, talking, prayer as well, and um, and just yeah, just stopping. And and the other thing is being with my dog. <laughs> And cooking, okay. right? When you're in the kitchen, when you're in the kitchen cooking, and cooking, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm always cooking. I hear you. And isn't and the dogs are just get you so present, like with children. Yeah, yeah, they're just such a blessing. I love my dogs. I think I did eleven by accident. Oh, there you go. I did eleven. <laughs> Sorry about that, but you know it's a sacred number. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, Janella. This has been an absolute such, pleasure. Such a pleasure. And uh, we could talk for hours and hours. Definitely, we're going to. We're going to be looking at coming to Byron Bay, so I'm going to hook you up and say hello. Let's have a coffee or something. Do it, do <laughs> it. And <laughs> we'll do something anyway. But uh, it's been such a pleasure, and I, your knowledge is. So so needed it is so needed and you know I hope that you know you get onto social media even more and more and and educate people about all of the stuff that's in your head because I know we've only got a tiny piece of it today and I know that you know I've learned from you already and I know that you know that that what you have got to offer people can be life-saving you know yeah. it, it can whether it be life-saving in regards to extending their life or but also giving them the quality of life by just making some changes and understanding health in a in a new way I think it's so important that people hear that it makes me really angry to hear that that you know anyone like you would be censored because we need more of you out there in the world um, so, you know, I, I can't wait to see what you're going to create, you know, from your walks in Japan. Me either. <laughs> from, you know, an online course. I mean, you know, one yeah, of the, sure. I, one of the things sure. I did was um, I did an online course and I love it because it's just made and it's people can just access it. And, and when I'm not here anymore, it's still there for people to have um, that knowledge. So, you know, I'd I'm, I'm excited to see what you're going to create. I'm excited too. I'm really excited. I've got given myself over, I'm taking myself away for three months, not far though, near the beach at Byron, but in a little writer studio so I can just nut it all out and then execute it in the new year. I love that. This is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, JJ. It's been an honour. Thank you for asking me. I feel very humbled. Thank you. Yeah. I love I love you and I love what you're doing. So keep up that beautiful work. And you know, I'm telling all the listeners, make sure you go on to your, your website at the moment because you've got lots of things. You've got books, cookbooks. Song and my latest books. book, I think, The 40-Day uh, Transformation, has got really, even though it came out in 2019, it's really up to date on yeah. every, every health, health, really. Yeah, fabulous. So, yeah, make sure listeners that you go on to your, so your website is what's your website janella janella purcell.com yeah beautiful go on to that and check out all of the great stuff that janella's got thank you website. jj and all the best to you and i'll see you in byron for a matcha yes thanks janella <laughs> bye bye